Live from Bloomberg's World Headquarters in New York, I'm Shanali Basak. And from our studios in Washington, D.C., I'm Kaylee Lines. Welcome to Bloomberg Crypto, a look at the people, transactions, and technology shaping the world of decentralized finance. And Bitcoin hit a record high today before retreating amid an overall cross-asset market slide. The demand from ETFs and the upcoming halving driving crypto into a frenzy. And we're going to discuss this frenzy with Glenn Goodman. He was a bit skeptical before this Bitcoin boom. And of course, it's also Super Tuesday, so we'll talk about the current political environment as it relates to crypto legislation. Perry Ann Boring, founder and CEO of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, will join us shortly. So all of that is ahead, but first, let's get a snapshot of the market. The best way to do that on your Bloomberg terminal, CRYP Go. And what you will find is that although we did breach that $69,000 level for the first time since November of 2021, around 10 a.m. this morning, we have very quickly fallen back down. In fact, Bitcoin now down more than 3%, back around the $65,000 level. So we'll see whether or not this rally is sustainable, as we all remember what happened shortly after those record highs at the end of 2021. Meantime, though, interesting to see Ether sustaining its gains, actually outperforming once again, hired on the day by about 2.5%. We're trading around $3,675. A lot of optimism that the spot Bitcoin ETFs that fueled this rally we've been seeing in Bitcoin could be coming to Ether if the SEC would grant approval to those products. We'll find out probably in the coming months. And you also have other altcoins outperforming. Kronos up about 6.3%. I wanted, though, to point to Dogecoin because through the year to yesterday, Shanali, it had more than doubled. It was up more than 30% yesterday alone, giving back a big chunk of that gain, though, now down about 10 or so percent on the day thus far. This is what happens when we hover at the highs, Kaylee. We're going to look at some company stocks also tied to crypto because with the surge in Bitcoin, you have crypto stocks also surging as well. First, I'm looking at the shares of MicroStrategy, which has taken off since the rise of Bitcoin more recently, 146 percent in 30 days, if you can believe it. It is the largest corporate holder of Bitcoin. And now it is proposing to increase those holdings through a sale of $600 million in convertible senior notes. The value of Bitcoin on its balance sheet sheet has risen to about $13 billion, and the company held about 193,000 Bitcoin as of February 25th. Now, another company I'm watching here is Coinbase, very much affected by this latest rally. But twice in the past week, some glitches showed individual users having zero balances in their accounts. The company posting on X that we are aware that some users may experience in Increased latency across Coinbase.com, and a few users may see intermittent zero balances. But rest assured, your funds are safe. The team is investigating the issue and will provide an update. Trading was not impacted at this time. Now, the company was able to fix the issues quite quickly, and you could see the company's shares really unaffected here. You have it up more than 11% over the last couple of days when you saw some of those glitches hit. Of course, they're getting these glitches because of increased volumes. A lot of second and third order effects here, Kaylee. Well, and those increased volumes to large part have come from increased prices as we have seen this surge in Bitcoin in recent weeks. And many of Bloomberg's prominent guests have weighed in on the action. The trading has been, you know, by all terms, historic. We've got the very frothy, frothy levels. I do still think, despite, you know, the suggestions that there could be a bear case, it's difficult to really hone in on that bear case when the facts, I think, are so blaringly obvious in favor of a bullish case. Net new buyers drive uh, more adoption and, and market cycles. And I think the question to ask is, who are the net new buyers in this cycle? And the net new buyers is the global financial system. What we're seeing is these green shoots of demand are emerging, a lot of retail coming in, the trades are on the smaller side. And I think we're really yet to see what this untapped demand will look like once these ETFs are offered on more platforms. I wouldn't be surprised to see some correction and some consolidation. But I'm very loath to pick a Bitcoin high because I really do believe this is price discovery. It's competing against the S&P index. It's competing against real estate, a hundred trillion dollar plus asset class as a store of value. So we believe capital is going to keep flowing from those asset classes into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is technically superior to those asset classes. Now, Bloomberg's David Pan has been reporting on the Bitcoin rally and how options traders are pricing in $80,000 calls for the end of March. David, it begs the question, we've seen Bitcoin breach the all-time high today. We are seeing it taking a breather once again. How do you expect the prices to move on from here? 
So uh, we're still seeing elevated level of you know, open interest for higher strikes, uh, higher strike prices. So, um, so the mom momentum is still there, uh, even if we're seeing a pretty sharp pullback right now from the top earlier this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, seeing that now we're back down around the 36 ish or 35,000 or 65,000 dollar uh, level rather after hitting that 69,000 and of course the last time David we were at a record high like this was back in November of 2021 which was very quickly followed by a deep bear market so when we think about the bull run that came ahead of that bear market how does this bull run compare how might it look different I think the biggest uh, biggest differentiator for for the latest rally would be the Bitcoin uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs. So we are seeing one of the most sustained uh, bull, bull, run right, uh, bull runs right now across, uh, in the history of Bitcoin. So uh, as long as there's a positive net flows into into the Bitcoin Bitcoin ETFs, and we're we're gonna see we're, we're likely to see a continued uh, momentum, continued rally in Bitcoin prices. All right, Bloomberg, David Pan, thank you so much. And now let's discuss the price action further with the author of The Crypto Trader. Glenn Goodman is back on the program. Glenn, always great to see you. The last time you joined us here on Bloomberg Crypto was right at the beginning of 2024, about a week before spot Bitcoin ETFs were actually approved. And you told us at the time where we were trading about $20,000 below where we are now that you thought all of that was priced in. Maybe it clearly was not. What do you say this time around? Uh, well, if you remember correctly, uh, <laughs> what I was saying was uh, <laughs> I was long-term bullish, but short-term bearish at that point in time. And, and uh, in fact, the price of Bitcoin shortly after I said that came down by 20%. Uh, so I was right to feel that it was sort of frothy and overpriced mm -hmm. at that particular point in time. But the long-term bullish case uh, remained. So kind of, I, I suppose I feel similarly, actually, this time, somewhat similar to Mike Novogratz. Uh, you were just showing a clip of him there saying that he was a little bit worried for the short term. A a bit like me. And the reasons are that obviously the price has gone power parabolic recently. And uh, it doesn't take a genius to work out what usually happens after the price of Bitcoin or indeed any other asset goes parabolic. But there are lots of warning signs. For example, uh, I think the main thing to look at really is the uh, Bitcoin, fu the BTC futures uh, funding rates. If you look at um, uh, big exchanges like Binance, uh, you'll see that people are now paying around about 100% interest per year to borrow money to trade Bitcoin. Uh, and they're doing that in the billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever that has happened, historically, we tend to get a big correction. Now, already, as we, you know, as we're speaking, we've seen a correction already from 69,000 down to 65,000 already today. I've been watching those funding rates to see if they're adjusting. They have come down ever so slightly, but they're still at very elevated levels. So I would say my short term outlook is that perhaps we get another big surge to take us resolutely above that uh, above that all-time high. But at some point in the mm -hmm. not-too-distant future, I think we're going to see one of them big flash crashes at the very least. Glenn, how do you think about the nature of leverage in the system now as opposed to when you saw it the last time around that really drove many companies into bankruptcy? Do you think that the leverage that is built into the system now is unsustainable? No, it's completely different. This is just a short-term leverage thing. As I say, you could wash it out within a day quite easily. You know, that's why I said a flash crash, because it needn't last for weeks. It could be a really big one just to get rid of those uh, those uh, futures uh, traders and uh, allow us to have a more sustainable upward movement. It's nothing like the top of 2021. Big difference? Yes, we have got um, a lot more institutional money now, thanks to those Bitcoin ETFs. But what we don't have is the return of the retail traders. You remember it was during the pandemic, everybody was at home trading Bitcoin, all the, all the ordinary people. The ordinary people have gone and they have not returned yet. But now, of course, we have the big headline, Bitcoin reaches all time high. And that in itself is bound to attract a lot of new retail interest uh, in the coming weeks and months, which will probably in the longer term, push the price higher. 
Yeah, we, I feel like we've been talking about that a lot, when the return of the retail investor into crypto really would happen and what effects that could have on prices. What about the activity we are seeing in Ether specifically? It feels like where we were with Bitcoin a few months ago in anticipation of a spot Bitcoin ETF is now where we are with Ether as we look ahead to potentially, although it's not a given, that product being next to be approved. What are you seeing with ETH? I think with Ether, we have got, as you say, because there is now that same expectation as we had ahead of the uh, Bitcoin ETF launch, uh, a lot more interest in Ether. And, you know, over the past couple of years, I'd been, you know, watching that space quite closely to see if the Ethereum killer would emerge. And there have been various pretenders to the throne over that time uh, to try and be, you know, the the, the new sort of uh, internet computer or world computer, as uh, Ethereum was once called quite, <laughs> quite by quite a lot of people. But now uh, it seems that nobody has quite got there. Ethereum mm -hmm. is still very much second uh, to Bitcoin in terms of price. But, you know, below it, Everything else is sort of quite a lot lower. So I think still at this point, Ethereum is uh, is the big one to watch and mm -hmm. is the big one to buy. And that's why everybody's getting into it is because, quite frankly, nobody is seriously challenging it. Not yet. Glenn, you know how fast things change once you're in the heat of a bull market. Right. So in the months ahead, that could change, but not you, yet. You were talking about retail interest and how it hasn't showed up in Bitcoin yet. But it's hard to imagine institutions buying hordes and hordes of Dogecoin. And so when you look at the <laughs> interest that is in the meme coin, coins and other altcoins, where is that interest coming from and do you worry about the, the, any bubble popping there? I'm not too worried about bubbles popping just yet, because, as I say, the retail interest isn't there and it's pretty rare for a bubble uh, to pop before the before the ordinary people get in to uh, to carry the bag to take it off the uh, insiders and you know that that's the way it works in the stock market quite often uh, just as it does in the crypto market um i think it's worth reflecting on how closely uh, bitcoin's rise has um has mirrored nasdaq actually we did talk about this um when i spoke to you some months ago but i think it's worth noting that it's still doing much the same thing bitcoin followed nasdaq all the way down and it followed it all the way back up again now just in the last few days maybe a week it seemed to supercharge its way um, way above uh, where Nasdaq is. So that then begs the question, has it broken that correlation or is it now time for Bitcoin to come back down to that existing trend to where the Nasdaq is? The only other possibility is Nasdaq going absolutely crazy through the roof, which, you know, of course, is a possibility too uh, at this stage because, you know, everybody's saying that everything's priced in for, for the magnificent seven tech stocks, but stuff being priced in on fundamental terms, as we know, doesn't mean that the market can't go a lot crazier before it reverses. Mm -hmm. But one way or another, Bitcoin and Nasdaq, I think, are going to sort of get back to the level that they were at before. Either Bitcoin comes down a fair bit in the near future or Nasdaq comes up a fair right. bit. Glenn Goodman, we have to leave it there. That is the author of The Crypto Trader. We thank you for your time on a day that Bitcoin, of course, hit a fresh record. Now, coming up, we're going to talk about regulation this Super Tuesday with Perry Ann Boring of the Chamber of the Digital Commerce. And the pressure on the SEC to green light, as we were just discussing, Ether ETFs gets cold water thrown on it from Gary Gensler and his team. And to access all the latest data and news on crypto, check out CRYP Go on the terminal. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back to Bloomberg Crypto. I'm Kaylee Lyons in Washington alongside Shanali Basik in New York. Thank you for joining us on what is not just any Tuesday, but Super Tuesday. And with an eye on 2024 electoral politics, we want to bring in now Perry Ann Boring, the Chamber of Digital Commerce CEO. Perry Ann, of course, by the end of today, we very well could be effectively at the start of a general election matchup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. There's a lot of down ballot races to consider as well. What is the optimal outcome electorally for crypto? of these 2024 elections. 
You know, it's super interesting. The past four years with the Biden administration, they've clearly taken a very hostile approach to digital assets and cryptocurrency. We fully understand that, you know, they really don't want this technology uh, to proliferate here in the United States. There's a lot of talk about Donald Trump and what's his his current state on crypto. And the truth is, is we, we don't actually know what his stance on crypto is. And I would caution people to think he might be a strong uh, proponent of digital asset technology. During the Trump administration, they didn't have a very good track record of promoting you know, technological innovation. The SEC, uh, you know, Trump under the Trump administration, blocked spot Bitcoin ETFs, just like uh, Chairman Gensler yeah. uh, did. Um, secretary Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, tried to outlaw self-hosted wallets, which led to us being involved in, in, in legal action with the U.S. Treasury to prevent some you know, devastating requirements on, on this technology. And then President Trump himself put out a statement saying he was not a fan of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So we are calling on Donald Trump to issue a clear statement on his position of digital assets and cryptocurrency, because as of today, it's not clear. Yeah, well, we'll see if we get that. It may be a little bit more clear where, say, Senator Elizabeth Warren, the Democratic from Massachusetts, stands on the crypto issue as she is pushing anti-money laundering legislation as we speak in her chamber. I actually caught up with the senator about that last week. Just take a listen, Perry Ann, to what she told me. In our financial system, pretty much everybody follows the same set of rules. I'm talking banks and credit unions and credit card companies, uh, gold traders and stock brokers. Uh, private equity now has to follow the rules. Precious metal dealers, Venmo, Western Union, but not crypto. My view of the world is same kind of activity, same kind of risk, should have the same regulation. Perry, and she told me she just wants to level the playing field. Would this legislation do that? Where do we even start here? I mean, Senator Warren is literally the queen of political theater. What is she even talking about? Same risk, same regulation. Of course, we agree with that. And that's exactly what we currently have. Senator Elizabeth Warren has misled the U.S. Congress and many of the American people through the way she is communicating how cryptocurrency is regulated today. As you know, she has a bill that we're calling an effective ban on cryptocurrency. 19 members of the Senate are currently sponsoring that bill. We've met with all 19 of those offices, and many of those offices were shocked to learn that cryptocurrency businesses are regulated as money service businesses the exact same way that remittance providers like your Venmo and MoneyGram and PayPal are. Companies are right where you go to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. These are at exchanges. Uh, you can now buy cryptocurrency through PayPal and the Cash App. All of these companies where you do the exchanging, so to buy and sell cryptocurrency or anything else, they're regulated as money service businesses. They are registered with FinCEN under the U.S. Treasury, and they are subjected to the Bank Secrecy Act. There is not a gap. That is just misinformation. And shame on her for doing that. She does does know the difference. This is a political attack on Bitcoin and on cryptocurrency, and we must hold our elected officials accountable. Uh, Perry Ann, you know, you think about some of the bigger leaders in the crypto community, Brian Armstrong of Coinbase this week online, not just talking about Bitcoin and his trading platform, but a lot about a stand with crypto rally in Los Angeles, urging people to vote uh, and really have a stance when it comes to pro or anti crypto candidates in Super Tuesday alone. How many more candidates are people really targeting in state and local elections at this point? as well to really elevate them into the upcoming races. Well, that's one of the things that's so interesting about all of these themes that are happening right now in our country. Americans, what is their number one issue? Poll after poll uh, says it's inflation. We are living in historically high inflation rates. Most Americans, just middle class, normal people who have regular jobs, 
are having a harder time just surviving to pay their rent or their mortgage or to buy groceries, gas, the price of everything has gone up. And, and Bitcoin in particular is inflation proof. It has a limited supply. You can't print more. And so why do we have politicians trying to take this option off the table that would protect Americans from inflation at a time when they need that protection most? And that's why we have so many people around the country who are running on pro-Bitcoin and pro-crypto platforms. You have Bernie Moreno in uh, Ohio is one. You have oh, yes. uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, you know, uh, Senator Casey, he's one of the 19 who wants to ban cryptocurrency. His challenger, McCormack, just came out pro-cryptocurrency. Elizabeth Warren has a challenger. John Deaton uh, running for Senate, right. running Crypto against lawyer in Massachusetts. Elizabeth. So we, we are starting to see that Americans don't want yeah. their access to technology taken away from them, especially in an illegal way. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I, I do think this is gonna have an impact on, on the polls and we must be vigilant about who we vote for because the current state is really yeah. unsustainable. All right, Perry Ann, we gotta go, but thank you so much for joining us. Perry Ann Boring, Chamber of Digital Commerce CEO. We appreciate it. And of course, you can have more coverage, a special Tuesday, our Super Tuesday special coverage, rather, 9 to 11 p.m. Washington, D.C. time right here on Bloomberg TV and Radio Tonight. And coming up, we're gonna talk about the SEC telling crypto enthusiasts not so fast when it comes to an Ether ETF. Stick with us. This is Bloomberg. Ether has rallied nearly 60% this year amid expectations of a swift approval for an ETF from the SEC. But regulators are not in a rush, and Bloomberg's Emily Graffeo reported on this. She joins us now. Emily, for the people betting on Ethereum, are they facing a rude awakening when it comes to an ETF approval? Well, they could be. We have until May 23rd, where the SEC has to make a final decision on VanEck's Ether ETF application, and there's still a number of different factors that the regulator has to consider. Ether's legal classification, is it a security, is it a commodity, and also the correlation study, is the Ether futures market and the spot market, um, you know, correlated enough just like the study that we saw in the Bitcoin approval. So there's a number of issuers, think Bitwise, Valkyrie, that have Bitcoin ETFs, but they actually haven't applied yet for an Ether ETF because they're still waiting for all these questions to be answered. So not as much excitement, at least out the gate as a Bitcoin ETF. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Emily, we thank you so much for your time and reporting. We know you'll be all over it. That does it for Bloomberg Crypto. Join us again, same time, same place, next week. And watch Kaylee covering Super Tuesday all day. It's certainly a big day for crypto and non-crypto communities alike. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg.